as my students increasingly use Python and R in my courses, one of the questions they always ask me is uh, what text editor they should use or what development environment or generally how do they write their code, right? So the big two questions I get are you know, how do the, you know, how, what should they use to write their code and then uh, how, how to use Git and, and GitHub. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. But so what I'm going to do here is go over a couple different editors that you can use to write R and Python code. Uh, and I'm going to give you my opinion as to what I think you should do. Uh, and then I'll also tell you what I would do, which is, which is actually quite different. But, uh, and, and when I say you, what I'm, I'm talking about here is a student in, you know, particularly a finance, accounting, economic student that's writing a lot of R and, and, and Python, uh, which means you're generally interested in, in a REPL, right? You want the read, eval, print loop. So this is what I'm, I'm, I'm targeting. Uh, my advice to this is this is the type of student the type of person i'm targeting my advice to if you're gonna only code in c uh then you right my advice would be quite different but uh but if you're gonna if you're armed python and you and and you you are you're just beginning so you, that REPL is really important and the code completion is really important that's who i'm, I'm targeting this to so all right right off the bat the, what i would advise you to, to use is visual studio code Right, so I'm going to go over video, Visual Studio Code, Atom, Vim, and Emacs, right? And I use Emacs uh, and to a lesser extent Vim. So uh, I'm in Emacs all day. That said, I would advise you to use uh, Visual Studio Code. Now, uh, why, right? Uh, so one of the things, so I'm in Visual Studio Code here, uh, and, and I've opened up a Python file, right? So the, the, the biggest reason I advise students to use uh, Visual Studio Code is once you open up a Python file in, in, in VS Code, uh, it's immediately going to come up and say, hey, this is a Python file. Uh, do you want to ex install all these extensions that will help with Python files? And that'll automatically give you a REPL, right? A read eval print loop. So, you know, and, and you can also go in here and type, Py you know, to the extension. Um, and type Python and right, I have this installed and you can see a, a bunch of other stuff that you can install, right? So the, the biggest thing for students I think is useful is just how quickly you're up and running with VS Code. So you, you install VS Code, you open up a Python file, it'll give you a bunch of suggestions, you can click yes, uh, and then within a couple minutes you're writing Python code with nice code completion and a REPL, uh, which is why, again, I, I advise VS Code. Now, what is a uh, uh, what does a REPL look like? Uh, what is you know what's you know what's code completion? So I have uh, here's some Python code. And what I can do is uh, hit uh, Shift Enter, and it'll it'll uh, it'll run this. It'll start uh, uh, IPython notebook over here, and uh, I should be able to. I already ran that line. I, I have Vim key bindings on this, so I should be able to just uh, run everything, highlight all that, and run it. So it's running. It's running that code, and then what I can do is enter that and actually take a look at the code. So what this did was loaded some libraries, uh, Coinbase Pro, Pandas uh, for for handling the data, connects, pulls the data, convert, and then converts into a, a data frame. So I have a constructor here uh, for uh, for a data frame, and then this this just prints it. So this is you know, kind of working in, in, in a REPL. I can see my output. As you're learning Python, it's very nice to have this REPL so you can kind of take a look at what your data looks like, uh, that um, you know, you're going to end up plotting it a lot, so, right, so I can see what the plot looks like. Uh, later on, you might write Python, and, and once you, you, know, you use a REPL, and then you put it into a script, and then you run the script, which will run the entire, every line in the, in, in the file. Uh, at, you know, uh, um, all at once. But uh, when you're learning, it's really nice to have this REPL where you can kind of uh, investigate. You can go back. I can type code in here uh, to see, you know, um, to to test some, you know, test something, and then uh, and then if it works, bring it back into my code source. So the REPL is really important, and the REPL is uh, immediately you know, with very little configuration, you have a REPL in VS Code. The nice thing, I, I also mentioned code completion. So ETH is a data frame. And if I uh, type this, it'll show all the methods that I could use on this data frame. So as you're getting used to some library or language, uh, you, you don't really remember what everything is. So this, you know, you might forget the name of something. I, I know it started with a D. Oh, it was diff, right? Uh, or dot for... Um, 
uh, matrix multiplication that this should be a dot product, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, and then notice that it has, you know, help here. So the idea is it comes up and it said, defines the function. These are the arguments to the method. Sorry. And then uh, it, uh, it'll describe it. So this is, you know, having this is really nice when you're just getting started. As you progress, you, you, you need this, you know, less and less. I still use this, but you, you need it less and less simply because you, you remember, okay, drop NA to get rid of my, uh, any NA values. But, uh, uh, but, you know, in the beginning, this is really important. And the idea here with VS Code is a couple clicks of the button and you have this in, you know, on your computer. Also keep in mind I have an R file here. Uh, VS Code will have a REPL, you know, so I should be able to bring up a REPL here, shift enter. Uh, with R, real quick, um, I wonder, I never tried bringing up uh, two REPLs at the same time. I should be able to bring up a, a, a REPL with, for R. Let me see here. Um, let me see if I reopen this, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that, that was silly. Uh, I, of course, can have, I can have a REPL open with both. I, you know, let me reopen this and, and run this line. Um, the, the only difference here, uh, the reason why it, it wasn't working for a second is uh, with the R, to send something from the source source file into um, uh, the eval you know the uh, to where it's evaluated, uh, I hit Control Enter here, right? So here, here I'm hitting Control Enter, uh, and then I can do the same sort of thing. So again, VS Code uh, very quickly you'll have um, you know you you could have uh, multiple files, multiple different REPLs with very you know very little configuration. One of the nice things I'll also note about VS Code is uh, um, there's really great add-on software to it. So one thing I use here is Git Lens. Uh, and uh, Git Lens, let me sort of get rid of this, some of this stuff so you can see easily. Uh, what Git Lens will do is if I have this Python file, uh, it comes up and it tells me what commit each line was from so I can and hover over it and it'll show me the the commit and I can click this and and see the commit uh, so you know this is this is really you know nice and again this is uh, very easy to to add on this extension to it so uh, um, and you know this is this is you know just hovering over and seeing uh, documentation is nice but so this git lens is really nice uh, now are there any downsides to VS Code? One, uh, interestingly enough, the, so VS Code is solid software. There are some things that, uh, you know, it, it's not perfect. One of the things that, uh, one of my biggest frustrations with VS Code is uh, it doesn't handle nested um, a Git repositories. So if you have, uh, you open the directory in it with the Git repository and then a subdirectories have other Git repositories, if you open files in those subdirectories, it doesn't automatically adjust what your what uh, what uh, uh, Git repository you're in. Now, that said, when I'm using VS Code, I, if I need to do that, I just open up a terminal. And um, here I don't have a nested Git repository, so I have a one Git repository. But uh, I can, you know, use Git status on this, and then um, you know, uh, just CD into a subdirectory, and then there's no. Git repository, but then I could work in my Git repository here. But to work in nested Git repositories in VS Code, I actually have to drop into uh, the terminal, which is uh, which is fine. But it's 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 surprising that they and there's an open issue on VS Code to fix that, so I'm sure they'll fix it soon. Uh, the only other negatives to to VS Code, and this I'll talk a little bit about, is it might not be a negative for you. However. There's no, you, you're working in a GUI. There's no terminal version of, of VS Code. So, so this might be a negative. I work a lot in a terminal. So if you don't care about working in a terminal, that's not a negative for you. But uh, for, me, for, for me, that's quite a substantial, substantial negative. That said, uh, you know, I've been working in, since 2001, I've been working pretty much exclusively in Linux environments. So again, you know, uh, your mileage may vary. If you're sitting there on a Windows machine or Mac machine and, you know, having a terminal uh, might not be, a terminal version might not be that important for you. All right, so that's a brief introduction to VS Code. It's definitely what I would advise you use. Uh, one other I'll show you here is Atom. 
Uh, Atom is also very nice. It's uh, if you install hydrogen, uh, there's uh, what I'm doing now is evaluating uh, this Python code. Uh, I also have Vim key bindings on here, so let me uh, uh, do, do that, that, and then you you, you can, can see, see the output. output. You, you can, can also, also again plot, plot right? And it'll, it'll show, show the plot. So, so here, here it it acts like, like a Jupyter, Jupyter notebook, and, and it puts, puts the output right in here. here. Uh, Atom is also very nice. Atom was created by GitHub. Microsoft created VS Code. Microsoft has now acquired GitHub, so Atom is now also under under Microsoft. So I don't really, I only mention that to say, I wonder what the future of Atom will be, but it is a very nice text editor. It handles nested Git repositories well. The only thing I'll say in relation to VS Code is, it might be a little bit more difficult uh, to configure, but, but not much more difficult. It also has very nice code completion, so if I want to see the methods that'll act on a data frame, uh, I have them here, right? Uh, so it, it's, it's got nice code completion. I'm sure there's a way to, to bring up the documentation if I, if I bring up absolute value and bring up the documentation of it. Maybe if I hit F1 on that. Uh, no, but uh, so it, it also has very nice code completion. If you want to use this, it makes a, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but at the end of the day, given the choice between VS Code and, and this, I think there's probably more extensions on VS Code. There's probably more people using it. So it becomes hard to advise this over VS Code, but it is also very nice. Now I'll drop into two other editors. And we're really switching gears here when I talk about these two editors. This is Vim and Emacs. These are what I would advise. This, this is what I would do, right? I advise you to use VS Code, but what I would do is I would either use, if I were just starting out, I would use Vim or Emacs. I use Emacs. I also use Vim a bit, but I, uh, but, uh, so I'm agnostic really between the two, but the difference here is Vim and Emacs have been around for, for decades. They're, they go back to the 1970s. They are both very extensible. You can extend them. You there when I talk about Vim and Emacs, there's really whole classes of editors built around Vim. There's Vim, there's Neo Vim, and and so forth. And Emacs, there's X Emacs and Remacs, Emacs written in Rust, and so there there there's a large ecosystem around each editor. You, there are extension languages for each editor. So Vim has Vim script, and then Lua. You can extend Neo Vim and Lua in Python. Emacs you can extend it in Emacs Lisp. So these are very large, mature text editors that can be used sort of like as IDEs with REPLs. And additionally, uh, they work in, in, in the terminal. So I often am secure shelling into various computers on my network, and so I can easily secure shell uh, and, and open up Emacs or Vim in a, in, a, in a text editor. The downside of these two, which I'll touch on, is that they take a while to learn, and then they take a while to configure. So the reason why I advise VS Code is you'll be up and running in two minutes writing code. With Emacs and Vim, it, you will, there's a little bit of frustration in the beginning, and then you, you'll get it, and, 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 every, and then both Emacs and Vim have a large, if you take the time to learn them, then uh, they are, they're really nice, and you can be really fast, and, and they can be they can be used entirely with uh, the keyboard. So there's a big payoff to learning them, but there is a, there is a, there is a learning curve. So let me, so to give you an idea, let me uh, open up NVim uh, and I'll, I'll look at the Python file. All right, so here's uh, NeoVim. Let me get rid of uh, syn the syntactic there. So what I can do is uh, uh, I can open up so I hit leader enter and I, and I and I jump into sort of a REPL here. Uh, and then now Vim key bindings take a little bit to learn. I, I like Vim key bindings, uh, but uh, so that, you know, that's one of the sort of first things is to, to understand the difference. It's a modal editor where I have move around and then I have insert mode. Uh, so what I've just done is send that to the REPL and then I can send this down to the REPL and I can see the, the data that I just pulled in the REPL there, I can plot it. Uh, here I actually have this call plot show. Oops, I have to plot show, and then you know I can I can look at it here. 
just like VS Code and Atom, you know, I can do this and start seeing a method. So here's, I can transpose it. I had to take an absolute value. So these are all methods that I could put, call on this data frame. Um, this is nice. It has the method and it has the help there. You know, what arguments, what's uh, the description of it and so forth. So all this code completion you have. That said, you have to configure this code completion. It doesn't just, it doesn't just, uh, it doesn't really, it works pretty much out of the box, but you have to, do you, it takes you a little bit to, to learn how to install. I use Pathogen, so you have to learn how to install add-ons with Pathogen and clone Git repositories in a certain directories, and, and then you can get it. So if you're familiar with them, it, it's very easy to get going, but just starting from zero, uh, it, it, it takes a little while to configure this. Uh, a couple other things to mention about Vim is uh, it is made to be a text editor. So while I can move around files and so forth, it is not, let's say, it is not necessarily mentioned or, or made to do it, I, uh, which, is, which is just the nature of, of Vim being, if I haven't mentioned, Vim initially was created to open up files, edit them, and close them. It wasn't really meant to start moving around files. It was sort of expected to be in the terminal doing that. So. Uh, so one of the things is Vim is excellent at editing files, and there, there are a lot of add-ons to move around files and so forth. I think Control-M, and I have a um, nerd tree here where I can start moving around files. So, uh, so, so Vim can do it, but you know all this sort of stuff you generally have to add on to Vim, whereas it's, it's, it's uh, already there in VS Code. Note, I, I can uh, also open up an R REPL here and start... Uh, doing similar stuff, so I can I can open all this uh, up in 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 NeoVim. So, as I mentioned, one of the nice things about uh, Vim is also anything I'm doing here, right? I can do in a terminal, right? So now I'm I'm not in a uh, I'm not in a GUI frame. I'm actually in a terminal, so it, I don't need. You know, I can secure shell in without, you know, you can secure shell with a, uh, with a GUI, but without a GUI. And, and I, can, I can do everything here. I can use Tmux or Screen as a terminal multiplexer, or have a, a couple different Vim uh, instances open. And uh, I, I don't want to go too far here, but it's really nice to be able to run processes, detach them, and then log out from a secure shell session. Uh, so there's just, there's, there's a nice workflow. Uh, if you work in a terminal, you know, you, uh, you really, you have to become familiar with, with Vim or, e or Emacs. Okay. So let me leave Vim there. Uh, it's an excellent text editor. Uh, and again, it has a lot of features add on, add, added on to it and you can, more features will, will come out. You can code whatever you want. The idea is if you want to feature code it yourself, uh, Vim uses Vim script, but then NeoVim, you, you can extend it with Lua and Python. So it is, it is really, it's really great. All right. So let me go back down to what I use, and that's Emacs. So I use Vim a bit, but uh, every day, all day, I'm in Emacs. Now, Emacs is different than Vim. It, it, it has a different goal. Vim started off as being a very good text editor. Emacs is really a Lisp evaluation environment. So what Emacs is, is it's a text editor within a Lisp evaluation environment. So the idea of Emacs is it should be, it by, just by definition, is extendable. It is whatever you want it to be. Uh, Lisp is a full programming language, so you can add in a lot of functionality. So maybe a, a best example is in Emacs, I can browse the web. There's a web browser. There's a, uh, uh, I handle my email in Emacs. So I can pretty much do everything, write research papers, uh, trade stock, uh, anything without ever leaving Emacs, which is different. Vim is, in, is intended to, you're in a terminal, you open up with Vim, you, you, you do something, you close Vim, whereas Emacs, you're meant to live in it. So different purposes. But they are, they're largely this, the same in terms of what I'm going to say or the sort of the pros and cons to them. So let me give you, all right, we're in Emacs. Uh, let me, Emacs is, is a little bit better for, uh, hint for moving around files and so forth. Again, it, it's meant to, you know, you use Emacs for, for, for moving around the files, whereas Vim, you, you're kind of a, a supposed to use the terminal. 
So Emacs is, and I can also right, uh, you know, use sort of like a nerd tree type uh, um, thing here in, in Emacs, right? So uh, Emacs, you know, pretty much has anything you could ever want. Uh, but again, there's there's a substantial learning curve to this. So I can run this file again. Now I'm just hitting Control Enter, running the same file, right? There's my Ethereum data. Uh, the, I can. There's my plot of Ethereum. So that's fine. Just like all the other editors, if I start typing this, it comes up with a bunch of methods. I can sit there and hit F1. It'll bring up the documentation uh, to the to the method. Whoops. Right, F1. So you see the documentation down here. Uh, so it'll bring up the documentation to the method. So it has a REPL built in. Well, I should say, sorry, you have to, what I'm using in terms of the, the REPL here is LPI, right? So it does not have a Python REPL built into it, right? You, you have to, just like Vim, you have to install uh, this REPL, right? Not very hard, but you have to sort of get to know it. Similarly, uh, here with R, right, I can just hit Control Enter and I'm starting an R process and, and then, you know, here's my, you know, I can use R just like that. Uh, so what I'm, so for for Python, I use a, an, an extension pass, package called LPI. For R here, I'm using ESS. So, so this has everything that VS Code has, but you have to, you have to, you have to uh, configure it. Now, one thing I have here to say, I keep mentioning you have to configure these things. So I have my init open here. So this is just what configuring it sort of looks like. It's not very hard. This is this is Lisp code, right? But most of the Lisp code uh, you can copy from the web. Similarly, with with Vim, you know, this will be in Vim script, and then but a lot of it you you can copy from from the from the web. But you know, over time. There's, There's a substantial, substantial amount of stuff, stuff here that you're configuring. configuring. So, so, I, you know, so when I, I, can, uh, I have a JavaScript REPL, REPL so this is, is you know, what, what I'm using when I'm coding JavaScript and so forth. So now, as an example, what I can do here, this is Helm Swoop, but if I highlight the find key, uh, I can show all the places here in the file where I'm using, uh, let me just close this. Right, where, where I'm using, where I'm redefining keys, keys right? So uh, as I go through here, you can see I'm redefining a lot of keys. So this starts to show you, well, how much you're configuring it, number one, and then two, how much my Emacs might be different from your Emacs because mine is configured differently than yours. Much of these configurations are standard. A lot of people will use Control XG for Magit status. Right, so it's it's not to say that I'm just using something different from everyone else, but this is highly configurable, and and it, you know my Emacs will generally tend to be quite different my configuration from somebody else's Emacs. So the idea here, Emacs with them, you you configure this for you know you might it might take you a year to feel comfortable, right? Whereas VS Code, and you know, you 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 don't have to do any of this. It just automatically installs it, and and, you, and you're running. So this is why, this is where my advice differs from you know what I think what I would advise you to do to what I would do. This is what I would do, uh, but again, terminal frames matter to me, and you you know you have to say that I'm gonna I'm gonna use this for many years and for it to really pay off, uh, but. If you're just sitting there going, well, I want to, well, I just want to get rolling, then this is this will probably be a, a, a bit too much frustration. That said, there are, and I can show you, there are Emacs and Vim. Let's say, let's call them. They're at their their extension. Well, they're Emacs and Vim sort of distributions. Uh, these are Space Max and Space Vim, where if you download it, it's already configured for you. So you open Emacs up and it has all these configurations. So that is nice, but you still do need to learn a little bit of the uh, of what it's doing. If you want to add in packages, you have to go into the Lisp code and add in the package, I think. Uh, I've used it. Um, but so there are sort of prepackaged Emacs and prepackaged Vim. Again, what the, the idea here would be Space Max or Space Vim. And these are very good. So if, if you're sitting there going, well, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to learn an Emacs or Vim, you know, then 
but I don't really want to fully configure it myself. Then I would then I would then I would look at Space Max uh, or Space Vim, and then you'll have a, a nicely configured one. Last thing I want to say about Emacs here, and I don't want to forget to say it, there is there is a, and then I'll I'll make sure I there's a really nice aspect of Emacs, and this is why I use Emacs, uh, and that's org mode. Uh, you may have heard a lot about it. Uh, well, maybe not, um, but. Uh, Org mode is, is what I write all my research papers in. So the nice thing about org mode here, so I have an, I have an org mode, this, so this is an org mode file, right? This is just, a, it's, it's a markup file where I can use note, like brief notation, this creates a list and so forth. Uh, but what I can do in org mode is I can execute code, right? But you may have seen that if you have an R markdown file, you can execute R. And if you have a Python Jupyter notebook, you can exe execute, uh, um, Python code. And with some R Studio packages, I could execute Python from within R or execute JavaScript from within R. But you're really limited to one language per document. Whereas in org mode, I can execute arbitrary languages. So what I've just done here, this is my this is my I wrote an R package, this is EIA data. So what I can do is I can use this EIA data package to pull some data. Right, so to pull some uh, crude oil data. So I can hit Control C, Control C here, um, and then Control C, Control C. It executes the code, right? And then, uh, and what it did was, what the code did was wrote this file right here, right? Um, so then, what I can do also in org mode is just write some HTML. So that's going to bring the output there. I can also, in the same file. Uh, and what you said, it just updated this here. Uh, execute Python code, right? So this this is going to pull. This is going to create an R chart. This is going to, you know, this outputs this Python code. But then also, what I can do in the same file, right? Which you you can't do in in in, in you know like an IPython notebook, or Jupyter notebook, is I can start uh, writing C again. This might not matter to you, but as you let's say you start coding more and more in R, well then. Uh, you might want to drop down into C or C++ to do certain things. R is written in C. So uh, it's really nice to be able to, to, to write C. So here, uh, I'm going to evaluate this. What this does is it allocates some memory. Uh, and what I have here is I'm showing them the address of a pointer here. And then uh, I allocate some memory on the heap with with malloc. So that's M and it shows the address of that. And I'm going to execute this. And you, you should see, um, because when I execute it, the... the uh, memory allocation and the pointer location are going to be different. So this will change. So um, I'm executing that C code and you can see the, the memory location changes. So now if, you, if you're somewhat familiar with C, you'll, you might note that I, there's no main function here. You're sitting there going, well, why isn't there a, you know, a main org mode just automatically wrapped it in a main. So I could put a main in there and, and it's fine, but org mode just automatically wraps it in a main. So this is what I write all my research papers in. So the idea here is if I'm writing some paper, I'll have uh, you know a bunch of Python code that will create a table, and then all I do is what I'm doing is here I'm hitting Control C, Control C, so that, uh, and then my table is updated, and I never have to go in and actually put numbers in a table. So, uh, and then I can export this. So I'm going to hit uh, Control C, Control E, and then H H, and I'm going to export this to HTML. Uh, then I can just say Firefox uh, ex dot H, right. Uh, and then here's the file. You know, this is the nice R thing that I created there by executing that code. So a nice kind of interactive document or interactive graph, uh, Python code, and then the C with the addresses in memory. So yeah, this is one of the real reasons I use uh, Emacs. Now in VS Code, you can do R notebooks, you can do Python notebooks, but you can't do this, right, that I know of. I don't think so. Uh, so this is a really nice aspect of Emacs. And one thing I should always say to students is if you want, you know, really helps you get a job is if you can do a little bit of research, and but you have, you have to make it public, you have to show other people. Uh, so, you know, I provide a lot of databases like FDIC databases. So if you can create some a notebook like this that connects to the database, pulls some data, does some analysis and says, hey, look, uh, I'm doing a lot of research now on why there are so few new banks, new uh, de novo banks. So you, you just do a brief analysis like this with the code embedded here uh, and then push it online. Uh, then, it, you know, it, it really um, it, it really helps show that 
showcase your skills, right? So uh, this is one of the things I, I, I wanted to mention that org mode is, is, is really phenomenal. This is just one way I use org mode. It, it, it's, it's, it's very broad. You can use it for note taking and so forth, but it, it is a really great feature of Emacs, right? The fact that you can use your email in it, it's, but, but is, is you can take it or leave it. But this is, this is a very useful for, you know, an undergrad, grad finance student. Okay, so let me see if I um, said everything that I, or in summary, and make sure I said everything that I, I wanted to say. The VS Code comes well configured, you know, uh, the cons, you can take it, uh, you can decide whether these are really cons to you uh, or, or not. I put this into an org present. Uh, they, you know, they, they may be cons to you or, or, or maybe not. Similarly with VS Code, it's easy to configure, but not as easy as VS Code, Adam is. So uh, that's why I, 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 I advise VS Code over it. Vim, NVim, uh, is an excellent editor. You know, I, I could easily use Vim were it not for org mode, uh, pretty much. You know, the only thing missing in Vim really is, is, is org mode. Uh, and then Lisp rematches. It's a Lisp evaluation environment. There's an old joke that uh, the Vim people used to say that Emacs is a it's a decent operating system. It it only lacks a, no. It's a it's a it's a great operating system. It only lacks a decent text editor, right? Um, but so I kind of joke. It's an operating system which increasingly becoming a really good editor with things like Helm Swoop and so forth. Uh, again, the cons and this this applies to Vim as well as just just substantial configuration required. Um, uh, I also list Emacs and Vim both as best text editor. Uh, I like Emacs key bindings. I don't mind them. So, but I can put Vim key bindings in Emacs. But so, you know, that's a, I, I think they both can lay claim to the best text editor. Uh, and, it, you know, these, both of these will be around for 20 years. Pre-configured options, uh, Space Max, Doom Emacs. I should also add Space, Space Vim in there. Uh, others that I haven't talked about and I won't talk about are our studio that, is it uh, it's for writing our code. I, I would not advise an, uh, an IDE or an editor that just does one language. So, uh, and you can, or is really centered around one language. So I, 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 would, I, I would not advise our studio. And Sublime is non-free. Uh, I've never used it. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly use it. Uh, good. So I think I've, I've said pretty much everything that I, that I wanna say there. Uh, 